Hi friends, welcome to Marie Meliora channel. Today we're going to do something different. I'm going to show you this really fun makeup. It's going to be get ready with me video. I absolutely love watching them when they combine fun kind of video uh, with uh, discussion of current events, uh, story time or any kind of like debatable poignant topics that are prevalent in our lives. So today I'm actually going to read you a absolutely marvelous piece. This is an opinion piece published in The Guardian recently and it's written by Catherine Bennett and uh, as soon as I stumbled upon it I was blown away and just how beautifully it weaves in elegant sarcasm with mesmerizing um, use of English language, the rich vocabulary styled toward the topics that we are about to discuss. It makes amazing historical references between different pandemics and how rich, poor and media behaved during, during the times of crisis, making hilarious parallels. So enjoy, uh, let me know what you think of it. And I also highly, highly recommend that you follow the link uh, to the original article below. I skipped a few paragraphs that were not as audio friendly. So this is mostly uh, an abbreviated narration, but it's truly worth reading and rereading several times because I learned so many beautiful phrases, words, and just the use of language is truly awe-inspiring. I absolutely loved it. Highly recommend you actually read it full. All right, let's begin. With classic plague literature now fairly thoroughly mined for instructive similarities with our current predicament, official cover-ups, forced isolation, met clerics, makeshift burials, heavy-handed policing, etc., perhaps it is time to turn to some of the differences. One of the major ones being, of course, the earlier absence of influencers. As terrifying as it would have been for anyone stuck in the London described by Defoe or inside Camus or on, these imprisoned citizens were at least spared survival tips dreamed up in the remote homes and gardens of fund managers, celebrity chefs, professional tidier uppers, titled brand ambassadors, and tablescaping experts. You might be banged up, scared, and brooding on things left undone and unsaid in 1665, but at least nobody thought this was a, the perfect time to inform you that, quote, this period of self-isolation is a good chance to experiment with more decadent table settings, quote. Yes, even if you're alone, mid-virus, quote, at a moment like this, the same concern continues, quirky tableware is particularly uplifting." End of quote. We can't be sure, admittedly, that daily bulletins on the lockdown habits of more successful 17th century people on matters such as skincare, quote, there has been no better time than now to look after number one, quote, and a new working from home wardrobe, quote, yes, you are confined, your style needn't be, end of quote, wouldn't have made pestilence and economic catastrophe more endurable, even for those unable to sit it out in Oxford or Salisbury. Quote, has there ever, suggests Samuel Pepys, been a better time to organize your old wigs, end of quote. Today, there are presumably people confined to gardenless flats with hostile fellow occupants who find that articles such as, quote, why we decided not to self-isolate in our Cornwall holiday home, end of quote, along with joyous diaries from isolated mansions, quote, I'm also planting a vegetable garden, end of quote, are just the thing like the government's separate bathroom advice to get them through another day of confinement. 
maybe people don't need personally to feel blessed in the face of illness and redundancy, to benefit from the example of busy professionals for whom it emerges, the ideal isolated day might begin with entries in a gratitude notebook. Has there ever been a better time to start one? As for material, the FT's Marie Kondo's inspired hints on gratitude practice as a means to finding, quote, joy at work in the age of coronavirus, end of quote, include, quote, be thankful for being healthy, end of quote. No disrespect to Kondo, whose tidying is unrivaled, but as with fellow influencers, some of her hints could challenge civilians now dependent on, for survival on universal credit or facing other threats from abuse to overcrowding to their gratitude or online shopping practice. Maybe it is because this contagion's projected remedy, self-isolation, is situated literally in the world of interiors that the restrictions have been so widely understood as a athleisure buying, self-care, crafting, decluttering opportunity, as opposed to an impending economic catastrophe. But maybe I've forgotten similarly abundant guidance on fermenting turnips, dumping cleaners, and gratitude practice after the 2008 banking collapse, generally from the very people it was least likely to touch. While some of our more fatuous celebrities seem to have piped down a bit, since contributions including Madonna's from her bath, and David Geffen's from his yacht helped propel the hashtag guillotine2020. The stream of virus-inspired lifestyle advice on things it has never been a better time to do has gone ever more Marie Antoinette. Quote, it suddenly makes sense, city dwellers without the space for a flock of sheep are told, quote, to own hands. Quote. Both UK lives and the UK economy were already imperiled on 17th of March, the day after shutdown, when the revered fund manager Dane Helena Morrissey drew on her long experience of getting dressed and sometimes working from home to reach out. Quote, take time to do your hair and makeup as usual, quote, she advised on her Instagram account. Avoid black, quote, too draining for most of us on the video, quote, and white, quote, too stark, quote. With this additional explanation for the gender pay golf, quote, I've learned, she wrote, that a jewel-colored polo neck with a necklace looks both polished and appropriate for remote meetings, end of quote definitely something to try when this is over. Among those professionally supplying emergency lockdown hints is Kirsty Alsop, whose early retreat to a spare home in Devon with an infected partner, quote, Heather, our nanny, is still in Lanzarote, end of quote, was widely covered. Channel 4 recruited Jamie Oliver, thousand of whose staff lost their jobs last year, to provide recipes, quote, specifically tailored for the unique times we're living in, end of quote. Oliver, now fully regenerated as a country squire, approaches this solemn task from a gigantic house that mercifully survived the collapse of his restaurant group with 71.5 million dead. The sun took the chance to show readers, quote, inside Jamie Oliver's incredible 6 million Essex country pad where he's isolating with Jules and his kids, end of quote. Quote, who better than Jamie to help us all navigate the day-to-day -day challenge of eating well and feeding our families, end of quote, asked a Channel 4 person who must have known that the obvious answer was the brilliant 
Jack Monroe. Jack Monroe once struggled to feed her child and has been characteristically generous in lockdown, tweeting users for ancient doomed looking ingredients. And whose navigation could be worse? A tie, I'd say, between Richard Branson and David Cameron, reaching out from island and hut, respectively. Although special Marie Antoinette points for the members of the royal family, photographed empathizing in the country while their London homes stand empty. It isn't that safe isolation wisdom and encouragement can be comforting. I've enjoyed in particular The Guardian's streaming gems, The Gettys Museum Challenge, and a terrific New Statesman compilation featuring Hilary Mount Mantle's recourse to Ivy Compton Burnett, Anthony Powell, and her old bottles of scent. Finally, something for my new gratitude book. I don't know about you guys, but I was so invigorated by this piece, and again, guilty as charged, even as a micro-influencer, my sincere attempts to cheer people up could be really coming across as very tone deaf. <laughs> anyway, share in the comments uh, if you observed any kind of similar Marie Antoinette response from celebrities and influencers, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>